Hey, it's me, Pro Jared. Welcome back to Death Gate. We've just flown back to the dwarves where we're going to save them. Thanks to all this fancy new magic that I know. Um, can ignore most of this junkus for now. Oh, what we can do is give this candle holder to Limbeck. This is much better than the pipe I was using. It's very thoughtful of you to offer it. He gingerly removes the candle from the straight pipe, hands the pipe over to you to hold, and jams the candle into the holder. Enthralled, he sets it down on the corner of the table, admiring the holder and completely forgetting about the pipe. So, I took it! Hell yeah, got another pipe. I'm getting closer to being able to fix shit. But first off, I gotta give this dwarf a bad day again. Just cast that, uh, heat spell. Oh no, not again! Sneak. Okay, so now, if we recall, up here... So, they said before that they had these glowing effigies as stand-ins for the elves to make them glow. But if the, their light was covered up, they would no longer glow. So that's why we can take this black shirt and put it on top! You drape the black shirt over the glowing figurines, but find that the light is bright enough to shine through the shirt, despite its color. You could reclaim the shirt. Damn, not quite enough. Well then, perhaps if I were to cast a spell on this magic shirt, such as... A sh nope, not that one. No. The Shroud of Darkness spell. Cast. As you weave the spell around the shirt, the light around you dims, as if the shirt was drawing it in. When the spell has been completed, you can only make out the vague shape of the shirt, but none of its features. It looks like a hole in the air. Cool. Boop! You drape the black shirt over the glowing figurines. The magic of the shroud draws the light from the statuettes into itself until they remain dull and gray. Since it's the magic of the figurines that maintains the glow effect of the gods, the instant the magic disappears, so does the elves' spell. They quickly realize their situation and bolt for the ship. Oh no! <laughs> The dwarves, seeing their gods without their glow, quickly form a lynch mob. They chase the hapless elves out of the caves, bellowing rather imaginative and graphic threats of violence. The noise causes the sleeping wizard to stir. To keep from being discovered, you dive out of his quarters and onto the ship's deck. Yeah! Uh, I'm gonna do another save here. Just in case. Hide in the storeroom. They'll kill you if they find you here. Yeah, if you go anywhere else, like, they'll just murder you. Storeroom? Okay. You hear some stuff scuffling. You hear some scuffling and shouted orders from the galley. Soon, the ship breaks away from its moorings and lifts off. A deep voice booms from somewhere near the door that the ship is entering human controlled space. All lights must be doused and all noise ceased. If the humans discover the ship's exact position, it could be taken. And there's a treasure chest. Oh. Yes, if you remember, this is where uh, the king said, like, well, we can find them here. We can trap them in. Take them. So I can, like, shear off this brick lock. The shear is too rusty and thin to withstand such an activity. If you try to snap open the locks with the shear, chances are it won't break the locks. Shit. Um, oh, can I shear open the crate? Open? Oh! You rip open one of the larger boxes. Inside, you find this shrinked device with three metal prongs, which crackle with electricity. A switch has been wired to its base. You shove the flimsy remains of the box to the side. Yeah, but unlock it? Unlock it with a shear? It does not do a good job. Damn. Do you have any magic that can... Do you have any spells that can open that up? Heat. I'm gonna burn the ship down. The lock gets hot, but doesn't open. Fuck. There is a way to open it, I don't know how. how. It might be for later. Well, I can do one of these. Click. You pull the switch to catch the electric zinger. As soon as the connection is made, the whole contraption flies out of your hand, and up the wall, throwing sparks everywhere. It ends with some royalty-free sound effects. 
Evidently, the light and sound pouring through the portholes was enough to attract the attention of the kings of King Stephen's forces. They surround the ship in mid-flight, board her, and take the captured vessel back to the castle. Hey, I did it. Congratulations. You actually succeeded. I didn't expect it, but I am pleased. Andrews and his men are safe. My thanks, friend. Uh... My pleasure, your highness. I did put my life on the line, but it was worth it to serve you. I certainly hope you aren't being sarcastic. No. My men gladly lay down their lives for me. That privilege is reward enough for them. I was going to offer something else, but that can be arranged. Um, no, I want something else. Wasn't there something about making it worth my while? You're correct. I'm not one to forget my promises when it suits me. What do you want? Money. Wait, um... Do you have a daughter? I was thinking hand in marriage. Lucky for my unborn daughter that I am currently childless. I'm afraid you'll have to come up with something else. Money? A treasure? How much does the royal treasury hold? Quite a bit. What does that have to do with your reward? Damn, alright. Perhaps you could just supply some information. Certainly. Tell me what you'd like to know. You relate your experiences on Drevelin and explain that you're looking for an artifact that the Kixie Winsy may have buried somewhere. If that's true, only the Kixie Winsy can dig it back up. If you're looking for that seal of air. I'm not sure how I can help you there. Even my learned wizard knows precious little about the Kixie Winsy. There is something I might be able to offer, though. The Kixie Winsy is an ancient Sartan artifact. Only the Sartan knew exactly what it did and how to control it. Since they disappeared ages ago, all that remains are the books and documents they left behind, but they are very scarce. In fact, the only place you can find them is in the Tower of the Brotherhood. Tower of the Brotherhood? I have that book! I found it. Why is the Brotherhood the only place you can find these documents? Doesn't anyone else have a collection? A long time ago, private researchers kept their own collections. They soon experienced very fatal accidents and their collections were appropriated by the Brotherhood. Pretty soon, whenever Sartan artifacts were discovered, they were delivered directly to the tower. Nowadays, the Brotherhood usually employs the researchers outright. Okay. Um, what's the Brotherhood? The Brotherhood is a guild of assassins. They pride themselves on the completeness of their library. They've gathered information from every corner of Arianus. This includes all of the Sartan artifacts they could find. No other collection exists anywhere. If documents exist that discuss the function of the Kixie Winsy, they're in their tower. Where is the tower located? That's I wanna a go problem. There. The tower is located in Skurvash, a smuggler's haven that lies on the border of elven and human lands. No nation governs that city. It's completely lawless. The Brotherhood has an iron grip on the place. Neither we nor the elves have been able to get a toehold. Skurvash is a haven for criminals and cutthroats. Neat. It wouldn't be a problem, once there, to go about your business unnoticed. People go there for the anonymity. The problem is getting you there in the first place. Currently, the elves control space around that area. I can't sneak oh. anyone in or out. Any ship with the markings of the Royal Fleet is attacked before it even gets so near the city. So if I had city. an elven ship? What about that elven ship I just delivered to you? Couldn't that sneak me into Skurvash? Yes, that's true. We've never had our hands on an elven ship before. They certainly wouldn't be expecting it, especially so soon after its capture. They'd have no reason to stop it from reaching Skurvash. Well then. Very well. It looks like my only alternative. Let's get going. Very well. I will staff the elven ship with my own soldiers. Sick. They will fly the ship to Skurvash and wait there while you search for your documents. When you have completed your business, they will escort you back to Drevlin. I will assume that this clears me of my debt to you. I wish you luck, friend. Now never come in here again. Now I've got two ships. You leave the king's castle, reboard the elven frigate, and discover that it's already manned by soldiers from the royal army. A no nod says sergeant greets you and signals the others to lift off. Within a few hours, you leave behind all sign of human habitation on any of the floating land masses. The only ships you see are of elven design. They let you pass unmolested? That's choice words, mistaking your ship for a member of their fleet. Soon, the sergeant points out a dark city on one of the floating islands. The ship glides towards it, but lands a couple miles away. Whee! I hope we don't get molested on the way there. We yet. don't want to answer any questions at the regular port, such as why King Stephen's men are flying an elven frigate. 
Better you get a little exercise and walk into town. Come back when you've finished your business and make it quick. Just being around Elven Space makes me nervous, but waiting so close to the Brotherhood is downright terrifying. Right. We're gonna do a new save. Called this one, Unmolested. Good. Oh, is there anything, uh... Yeah, treasure chest is still there, though. I'm gonna find my way into that soon. Oh, I remember this. I hate this kid. The Tower of the Brotherhood looms over a plaza flanked by a tavern in an alley. A child plays quietly to one side. The wooden doll is vaguely human-shaped. It wanders around its own little legs. You sense that it might be magically animated. Oh, oh there he goes. Peace out, kid. I'm done with you. The boy watches his wooden doll walking in circles around the plaza. After wandering around, it happily strolls into the dark alley. The boy steps toward it, but stops appearing terrified. He looks up at you with pleading eyes. Oh, sir. Would you please get my doll back? I couldn't possibly go in there. It's far too dark and scary. No. You want me to go in there? What's it worth to you? I would give you anything, but the doll is all I have. Please, good sir. I wish I was as brave and strong and kind as yourself, but I am not. If you do this for me, I will be in your debt forever. I hate this kid. All right, fine. Let's enter the alley. All right. <laughs> You wander into the dark alley, chasing after the scuttling toy. Its tiny legs don't move particularly fast, so catching it isn't a problem. When you pick it up, you catch a glimpse of rune markings carved into the wood, but before you get a chance to examine them further, a heavy rope net falls from the shadows. The child, who, not a moment ago, was crying over his lost toy, jumps on top of you and beats you relentlessly with an iron bar until you collapse onto the ground. He starts to rifle through your clothing, grabbing any object that he discovers. And he just takes all my stuff. You shithead. Shut up. I'm busy here, and I hate to talk while I work. The street rat has definitely started talent in the field. In seconds, he has stripped you of all of your possessions. So, here in the game, if you actually don't... If you uh, take too many actions that aren't correct, he escapes and it's game over. But thankfully, I have magic! Very nice doing business with you, oh, sir. There he goes. Wait, come back. And swap. While the young thief paws through your valuables, you take the opportunity to hang the swap spell in the air and grab onto his searching hand. His eyes grow wide as the spell takes hold. With an implosion of air, you and the street rat switch positions. He crouches on the ground, trapped inside of the heavy net. While you stand above him, the street rat looks up at you in amazement, unsurprisingly unafraid, but a little desperate. You're a wizard! A wizard hasn't been seen in Skirvash since far before I was born. Why are you here? Give me my stuff back. Never mind about me. Who exactly are you? And don't give me the helpless waif story again. I'm not helpless. But I am without parents, if that's what you're asking. I don't care. I've carved out a life for myself from the streets. I use scams like this one to stay alive. I know all of the dark and secret corners of Skirvash. If you're here looking for something, you'll need a guide. I can help. If you're new to this town, you'll get nowhere without me. Let me go, and I'll help you. Mm. All I want is the stuff you stole. Give it up, and I'll think about releasing you. Of course. But I'll have to get out of the net to show you where I've stashed it. Release me, and I'll get it for you. You already stashed it? <sighs> Fine. You lift the net off the child. Some hidden pulleys draw it up high onto the shadows of the alley. True to his word, the street rat doesn't run off. Instead, he produces everything he stole from you. Then, shuffling down the alley, he flips aside a greasy blanket to reveal a hole in the wall. He enters and motions you to do the same. In here? This dirty chamber isn't much bigger than a crawl space. It's crowded with the street rat's possessions. All your shit is shit. I'm willing to help you, but first I want to know what the job is, and what's in it for me. Um... 
How about your life? Well, it's enough for now. But as soon as you're out of sight, I'm gone. I think you're going to need more help than that. I'll kill you. And if you're going after what I think you are, there should be enough for everyone. And I want a cut. Wait. What? what do you think this job is? It seems to me that there's only one target worth the attention of a wizard. You're intending to break into the Tower of the Brotherhood. Fair. You must know that no one has ever made it into the tower and back out alive. You might not know how many have tried. Rumors of the Brotherhood's treasure have Treasures. spread throughout the realms. Thieves, from third-rate pickpockets to practiced artists, have attempted to steal it. Usually, the less talented ones are turned away at the front of the tower. There is no obvious way to get in. Only the members of the Brotherhood know how to enter. Well, Some make it I'm inside. Mean. Every few months, a new body is found in the town square, the result of another robbery attempt. Usually, the Brotherhood takes care of its own disposal, but these bodies are left as messages to every other would-be thief. And then we use that as me. In short, no one has ever succeeded. If this is your plan, you're going to need my help. Even a small cut of the tower's famed treasure would set me up for life. Uh... Split profits with you? I don't think so. All right, I'll give you what you want. What can you tell me about this town? How can you help? What do you need to know? Um... How do you get inside the tower? I don't know the method that the members used to get into the tower. I've examined the exterior, and I haven't found any entrance. But I've thought about this. Might need to read that book. Only the members of the Brotherhood can get in. So the answer is to become a member of the Brotherhood. You're new. Nobody knows you. You might be able to pull off something like this. As it happens, an assassin, a member of the Brotherhood, hangs out at the Devil's Workshop. His name is Hugh the Hand, and he's actively recruiting. It's not easy to catch his eye, and harder to have him sponsor you. Sure. What exactly is the Devil's Workshop? It's a tavern in the center of town. Sick. Low-life scum throughout Skurvash collect there to meet contacts, do business, and get drunk. In fact, the workshop's bartender is the most successful fence in town. The fastest and cleanest way to unload stolen merchandise is by selling it to him. Neat. Profit. How do I get this Hugh the Hand to sponsor me? Hugh is looking for only the most talented thieves and murderers. You'll have to do something extravagant oh. to catch his eye. What that may be, I don't know. Perhaps if you stole something rare or valuable. Or perhaps I could show him what a talented murderer I am. And yeah, for that, I will need your help. Who are your contacts? What do they have to offer? I know someone who was once a member and knows the entire layout. Undoubtedly, he'll be able to give me some vital information. I also know a talented craftsman who can forge any specialized tools that you may need. Unfortunately, both of those people are going to ask for a lot of money. Unless you've got a stash that I couldn't find, you're going to have to come up with some. I'll find some. All right, that's all I need. I'm ready to go. Very well. In order to help you any more, I'm going to need some upfront money. Ah. If you get some, bring it here, and I'll get to work on getting the information and tools that you'll need once you're inside the tower. Good luck. Oh, I think I know what to do. Nice pry bar. I'm taking this. You snatch the iron bar from the ground. It's no stranger as the street rat formally introduced it to your face back in the alley. When the boy sees that you've taken it, he starts to say something but stops and looks very embarrassed. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Tell me no? I'll fucking beat you with this. What could I possibly pry open with a pry bar? Me half his treasure chest! Uh, you slip the pry bar between the locks with a strong box lid. With a firm twist of the grunt, you break the lock and the pieces fall to the ground. Okay, take it. No. Open. <gasps> treasure. A jewel sack. And a tea pipe. Not as exciting as treasure. A burlap sack holds a collection of cut and uncut gems, possibly stolen from the dwarves. Oh my god, hell yeah. I'm rich, bitch. So this is the Devil's Workshop. That's the Brotherhood Tower, all right. The Tower of the Brotherhood looms over the plaza. Much as the Brotherhood's influence is felt through this realm, there's no obvious way inside. Might, maybe I'll read the book in between episodes and give you guys a summary. Because there, there's just a lot of text there. Hey, kid. If 
found this for you. You're on the right track. But stolen jewels won't do me any good. You don't want jewels? You'd rather cash money? Damn, alright, kid. Oh, everyone's looking at me. The Devil's Workshop has a large and dirty common room populated by people you'd never want to meet. Yes? How can I help you? Um... Give me a drink. Certainly. Do you have any money? No, I don't. Is that a problem? No, not at all. I suddenly don't have any drinks to give you. Will there be anything <laughs> else? Hey. I've got something that I want to sell. I'd be happy to take a look at it. Let me see. These are dwarven relics. Where did you steal these? Uh, they'd be worth more if there wasn't a glut of dwarven artifacts right now. He scans the room as if challenging anyone to call him a liar. I'm a little short of funds just now. This is all I can afford for them. He begins to stack coins onto the bar. As he does so, all eyes in the room are on you, including those of the dark figure in the corner, who's been studying this entire exchange. As you pocket the money, the dark figure motions you over. Ooh, we'll talk to this next this dark figure in the next episode. There you go. Got some money, made some little bit of profit, and now I'm gonna be caught and join the Brotherhood of Thieves. Is that why I liked this game so much as a kid? It might be. I don't remember. But I hope you're enjoying it too. Again, if you are, please let me know. And if you aren't, also let me know. Any and all feedback is greatly appreciated. And with that, as always, thank you guys so very much for watching. See you next time!